Yeah, I wonder why a government would want to disarm its people. Hello, Internet friends. My name is Susie. I will be your hostess. Welcome to It's Okay to Be Clown Pilled. I'm going to save this country as grassroots. In my the YouTube channel Guns and Gadgets interviewed the president of the VCDL. Those don't do anything about crime. If it doesn't make sense, you're asking the wrong question as to why, what, they're, what they're saying. The, the question is, uh, is would, these, would these bills disarm us? And the answer then is yes. Then it makes right. sense. All these bills all make sense under disarmament. And Absolutely. That's, that's, Gun-grabbing politicians have been infiltrating every state in the union, and they have passed a lot of oppressive gun laws. And what I find phenomenal when they tried to pull this same crap in Virginia, Virginia responded, what makes Virginia different than the rest of us? Why did they respond? Why did they come together as a community? Why does the rest of America have their back? That's what I find interesting. And I'm not going to find the answers in this interview. This is a great interview. Phil Van Cleve is a wonderful man, and God bless him. I am hoping that this is the catalyst that brings Progeny America together so that we can fight together as a nation and as a family against these satanic politicians who have taken over, stripped us of our liberties, and brought in hordes of invaders to replace us. All right, Internet friends, I hope you enjoy this interview. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the VCDL and what it is that you do? VCDL is the Virginia Citizens Defense League. We were formed back in uh, 1994, back when Virginia was a May issue state. It was up to a judge. Uh, some judges wouldn't issue a permit to women saying, ah, women don't need guns. Some wouldn't issue it to men saying men, men don't need guns, women need guns. It was a mess. And so we, we formed to change that in the first year we did. First year right out of the box, Virginia became a shall issue state, which we are now. So this was a, was a big move. We, uh, every year we uh, get good gun bills put in. We lobby against bad ones. Um, we are a watchdog. If a locality tries to ban guns illegally, we're right there stopping it. And um, we're also an educational group. Our members are some of the best educated on gun rights and guns in general as of anybody. <laughs> Being at ground zero of this fight, um, it seems like something happens daily in Virginia right now. Uh, with Governor Northam going absolutely bonkers, uh, what has happened since the elections and what has your agency done in direct response? Yeah, things were going south right after the election. The gun owners finally woke up and it was, it's just been an explosion in Virginia of gun owners that are awake. The thing that's interesting is, and I don't think the Democrat leadership gets it, this is truly grassroots. These are, this is not being driven like Bloomberg would do AstroTurf. He would spend a lot of money, pay people to stand up and pretend to be active on against guns or whatever. This is truly just everyday gun owners waking up, talking to each other at gun clubs and, and hunting out when they're hunting with each other whatever and it's it's this massive thing that's taken off and, and vcdl's goal has been more to help direct and organize that effort uh but it it's um and and the uh the uh governor and and the others and his staff are indeed pushing this but they've they've kind of gone quiet on lately i don't think they expected to see this massive tidal wave I mean, 3,000 people showing up at a little tiny board of supervisors meetings that might hold uh, 30 or 40 people at, at, on a big busy day. 3,000 are showing up. And uh, the, the message is, is just, uh, just it, it's, it, the volume is intense. Let's talk about Lobby Day 2020, period. Uh, you are expecting a huge turnout now. Uh, what do you want the folks who are watching and those who will watch the replay of this to know about that event? And, uh, on Lobby Day, yes, that's going to be January um, 20th of 2020, so it's easy to remember. 8 a.m. is when it starts in Richmond, Virginia, at the Capitol, downtown, 10th and Bank Streets. Uh, we are expecting, we don't know for sure. But uh, we're, we'd be surprised at this point if it's less than 50,000 people. It could be mm -hmm. as much as 100,000. This is going to be one of the biggest events they've had in Richmond, I think, in a very, very long time. Uh, and um, we, we are um, 
again, trying to get as many people there as possible. We're hoping maybe to have a little parade route uh, around the Capitol so people can, uh, while we're waiting for the speakers at 11 o'clock, we can, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> perhaps do some marching near the Attorney General's office and the uh, Governor's mansion. And um, so that uh, that's going to be, that day is going to be extremely busy, but we want as many patriots to show up as possible. Well, I know you have quite a few coming up. People coming up from Massachusetts, uh, <laughs> Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Connecticut, even some talking about coming from California and Oregon. It's huge. I mean, the the feeling of wanting to be here in support of Virginia gun owners is so humbling to have all these people from other states just reminding us that we're all brothers and sisters in this country and um, we're standing together in this fight. We stand together because if Virginia goes, a lot of more, a lot more states are going to be going to follow our path. Whatever path they take to, to try to take down Virginia, they're going to use in other states. And if we can stop it here, the hope is that this will be a model for other states to use as to how to block this stuff. Um, and so, to some degree, we're going to be uh, petri dish, dish dish on how to how to do this. How what do you do? How do you fight it? That's actually was my next point. Uh, what you're doing is going to be uh, the, t the telltale for the rest of the country because most of the Democrats, the anti-gunners, are watching what's going on right now. And what happens there will either help their agenda or hopefully retard it some. We have to stop this whole thing. And again, sanctu the sanctuaries we've been busy doing. You know, we've got 114 of those. We've got 91% of the counties are on board. But that's... The key thing is we've got to stop these things from becoming law. If they become law, the sanctuary thing is is it's really minimal as to how much it can 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 protect us. We just have to be to stop this and convince the governor and the general assembly to walk away, to not do any gun control. Just let it go. It's not like they've got nothing else to do. They got plenty else to do. Just leave leave our gun laws alone and walk away from the table. That's what we're hoping. My feeling is is that the nation is watching because, uh, I hope I'm wrong, but this could be uh, where we basically tell the government to, to you know, get back and we've had enough and not one more, not one more inch. You're right, that's very much why the world, why they're watching because Virginia, the people, the patriots that live here, all the wonderful citizens, law abiding. I mean, we, our crime rate is the fourth lowest. Apparently, last year we were we were fourth from the bottom in, in crime. So we certainly don't have a, a a public here that's anything but law abiding. But they also are not about to give up their right to keep and bear arms. We're just not going to do it. And if something breaks loose, it'll be because the governor. And the Democrats in the General Assembly just didn't get the message that this this is in their hands. If they if a civil war were to start in Virginia, they will start it. It will not be our side. It will be their side because they won't listen. Virginia has always been very gun friendly, uh, and I know that people have been able to carry their firearms in and around the state capitol for forever, and it's never been an issue. However, uh, the incoming Democrat strength, uh, who Miss Philicorn has said that once they take their oath of office on the 8th of January, their first order of business is to create a gun-free zone in and around the Capitol and on the grounds. What is VCL, VCDL looking to do about that first, number one? And number two, if they're successful with that, what will be the pivot for the lobby day, if any at all? Okay, yeah, and I don't know, last I heard, and again, maybe you've heard something more recent than I have, but la last I heard, um, they were considering making it a gun-free zone. I don't know that they've made a final decision on it. Keep in mind, a lot of the Democrat legislators and their aides carry guns hmm. in the General Assembly, so are they going to lock themselves <laughs> out? Well, we'll see. But in the past, when they've tried this, they tried it about four years ago. They tried to vote on it, and it went down 80 to 20. I mean, even most of the Democrats didn't want to support it back then. So things could be different now. We'll see. Um, well, first of all, if they do anything at all, it's going to be a – it should be a rule. So outside the building, 
Inside the building, they have metal detectors. Outside the building, if it's a rule, it would be like trespass. If they see you've got a gun and they ask you to take it off the property, then you best take it off the property. You'll be charged with trespass. Uh, but if they don't see the gun, I don't believe you'll be breaking any law. You'll be breaking a rule. Uh, okay. So, um, you know, concealed carry is always a, a nice thing. Uh, well, she did make that. That was a quote that I saw. I was about the, uh, two days she ago. Was so, do it. Yeah, okay. so she was. She said it was her first order of business. So uh, they've been true to their snake venom so far. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Yeah, they they they, they know they're doing things that the public wouldn't like. So back to the event. I've seen things in print, and I'm not sure if it's come from you or the organization. Uh, but you're welcoming people to carry at the event. Uh, but you are, if I'm correct, you don't want long guns because you don't want the attention taken from the speakers and the message, correct? Yeah, it's just because I know the press. I've seen this a, a million times. The guy with the long gun shows up and everybody runs over there to get his picture because that's what they want to be the symbol. And they don't listen to what we're saying. At that point, the message is all about this person standing there with a long gun. Right. That's fine if we're not trying to save our gun rights in Virginia. So that's, that's the primary reason. We have nothing against long guns, nothing against any kind of gun. You know, people carry however they want. We never dictate to our members how to carry, what to carry. We leave that up to them. Uh, this was just an ask. It was like, you know, if you want to be helpful to what we're trying to do, please don't do this. But it wasn't you can't do this. Of course you can do this if you want. It just depends if you're trying to be helpful or not. Okay, I, I just wanted people to understand that that you're not telling people they can't do that. Oh Because uh, yeah. when I when I put that on in a video, I get a lot of comments and questions like, well, you know, why it's a gun yeah, to, it's yeah, to yeah. Second Amendment, but it will detract from the message. And I just wanted the folks to hear it from you. Yeah, yeah, we're lobbying. We're not protesting. Where they right. we're, we're trying to say, yeah, we're, we're going to keep these, and you can't take them from us. That's that's not what we're doing at this point. Right. And now that this may, event that may be coming at some point, but it's <laughs> yeah, not here it looks, now. It looks like it. And for those who don't know, this event's been going on on this date for quite a while. So this isn't something new that they've started. So their lobby day has been an annual event. So they have they have their their machine well oiled and fine tuned. So the last thing they want is, you know, one or two people or a group of people to detract from what they've been doing because it's been working. <clears throat> so uh, the next question I have for you is uh, for those who are coming from across the country uh, to stand in support and arm in arm with their brothers and sisters in Virginia, what would you like them to know about what to expect on the lobby day? For instance, um, I already know that you'll have speakers and then the people are going to be going in through the state house. Uh, but what would you like to tell people who are coming from different parts of the country, how they can help and what you would hope for them to do? Well, the, the main thing is, first of all, we're not going to get um, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 people through the General Assembly building, okay? We will have shut it down to where they will they don't be able to let anybody in after we get to about 1,000. And uh, so we expect that to happen. And those people we're, we're thinking will be Virginian citizens, those coming from out of state. The most important people to be in the building are our are, are citizens lobbying their delegates and their senators. But the people outside, uh, the, the image alone, is going to be eye popping. It is going to be, we're going to have drones up taking a picture of this crowd. Um, that message, and, and, and again, if people are indeed, if we're able to do the little parade thing, the people chanting say, no more gun control, the volume of that should sound like an earthquake. And um, it, it's the whole thing is, is just geared to sending a message. To, to, let's not do this, guys. Let's let's walk away from the gun control. <clears throat> let's not push that button. Hopefully they uh, they listen because I don't think we're fooling anymore. Um, <laughs> no. So I, I thought of this question earlier today. Uh, every now and then I try to be philo philosophical. Do you think that this uh, focused disarmament movement that's taking place in Virginia on a scale that we've never seen before? <clears throat> as far as the, the amount that they're throwing against the wall all at once. Do you think this could be a test, specifically how America, we the people, will respond in the immediate? And it might give them an idea of how the country might respond, especially that close to D.C., if they get legitimately serious about gun control. I mean, it could be. Um, it, it could be that. Um, could be some kind of coordinated effort saying, well, you know, let's use, let's look at Virginia and see how, because this could be a two-way education thing. 
Right. We're looking at how you stop this, and they may be looking at how you shove it down somebody's throat, or can you shove it down somebody's throat? Uh, could be. Or it could be an ineptness by our governor who's just blundered into something, isn't paying attention, is tone deaf, and uh, is trying to pay back Bloomberg without really thinking. I mean, the other side is very much like that. We, we like, to, you know, we, we sometimes give them more credit for being intelligent than they are. We had we had a massive rally in, in Virginia. Well, it was actually the meeting in Virginia Beach to look at uh, uh, possibly putting in this sanctuary city. There were almost 2,000 people in, in that area. I mean, we flooded the door, we flooded everywhere. And there were uh, there were six of the Moms Demand actions in that whole crowd, six. <laughs> and one of them got up to speak and she says, well, the other side is just a very vocal minority. <laughs> and I, I couldn't help but say, you know, well, excuse me, there's six of you and 2,000 of us and we're the vocal minority. I, I'm just saying they're, they're, they can be very tone deaf, not pay attention to what's going on reading. I don't know. I really don't know if this how how much of this is evil and how much is stupidity. Well, it's definitely Bloomberg's investment, and uh, from yes. the reports I've seen, he's very very worried about his investment. He thought this was going to go off smooth. So again, <laughs> a, a, another thank you nationwide. Uh, we're we're all honored by what you're doing. We're all proud of you, and I know a lot of us stand with you. And as somebody who is a police officer, I know it's going to shock a lot of people listening. I. Uh, I applaud my brothers and sisters in Virginia, sheriffs and police alike, who have said, hell no, we're not doing it. Uh, all of those uh, counties who have gone to say, nope, not one more inch, uh, we are with you. The, the, believe it or not, there's more of us than there are of them, and we are with you. And um, I just want to thank you again for what you're doing because it is, it's needed. It's the spot where it has to happen. And you, sir, and your agency is the group that, that can do it. So it couldn't have... Uh, been a better setup. So thank you again. Yeah, I, I was a deputy sheriff for seven years, and I too am very proud of the police and the sheriff, especially the sheriffs in Virginia. These guys are, um, you know, they're constitutional in Virginia, uh, so they are elected. They don't answer to anybody uh, but the people, which I, I really that. think is great. Yeah. Um, oh, I was, before I forget too, I was going to mention the NRA is having a, uh, they're doing a day of of lobbying on one week before ours on the thirteenth. And they're not doing a rally or anything. They're just doing a lot. We're going to be busy as well. I mean, it's not like we're waiting until the 20th to jump in. VCDL will be there on day one. And I'm going to try to get as many volunteers to come with me and help me lobby as we go around. Uh, there's 140 senators and delegates to talk to. Yeah, that's a um, lot. Not all of them are maybe worth our time talking to, but, but a lot of them are. And a lot of the Democrats, um, are, we need to spend some time with them because some of them are in districts that may be blue because red gun owners have been sleeping peacefully and not voting, not being active. And now that they're waking up, things could change <clears throat> very much so if these guys stay awake. Um, the elections could look very different down the road. I think the, the Democrats are aware that they're, you know, that that could happen to them. They could lose the House in two years again. Well, if they're not aware, then they aren't watching TV or listening to the to the to the radio. Uh, but GOA and VCDL came out with a 12-page response to uh, your AG and your governor basically saying that the Second Amendment sanctuary movement it doesn't hold any weight, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, would you like to take a second to tell people about this and maybe uh, brush them up? Because I'm sure not everybody's watched all the videos that have been going on about it, not just on this channel, but others. Uh, but address maybe what uh, led to that with, um, with the AG, his ruling, uh, the couple bills that were put out to ban everything, to remove police that don't follow through with uh, their orders, and and, uh, and go into your 12-page uh, response that came out yesterday. Okay, yes. The, well, the, the attorney general said, oh, these sanctuary cities, they don't mean anything. And boy, those officers, uh, the sheriff and the police had best be um, enforcing the laws no matter what they are. When we pass these gun laws, they all need to be enforced. Um, and the, the paper that we put out pointed out that um, the attorney general and the governor are not following their own advice. Uh, for example, we had the um, uh, Protection of Marriage Act that was be part, became part of the Constitution, uh, which basically dealt with gay marriage. And uh, the, at that point, the, the uh, attorney general said, oh, no, you know, we, we don't think this is constitutional. Uh, who's he to say? He's just a lawyer like any other. Uh, we don't think this is constitutional, so we're not going to enforce it in Virginia. 
And then there was one that he did that was actually good, but it was the same principle where the United States had passed something that would have basically made it so that, you know, our right to um, habeas corpus and other things would have been suspended and we could be arrested because of for potential terrorism and stuff. And they said, well, uh, we're not going to support that because we don't think it's constitutional. So, you know, and, then, and this goes, yeah, there were other instances as well, the marijuana law. Uh, they say, oh, well, you know, if police don't enforce that, we're okay with that. That was our attorney general. So he, you know, so it's okay not to enforce laws if they agree with it, but the rest of us, oh, we better enforce everything they pass. Well, it's, yes. The hypocrisy is what it was pointed out in that, that he's being, a, really, both of them, the, the governor and the, the attorney general are hypocrites. It's 100% the agenda. That's all it is. Yes, it is. It's the agenda. I know uh, from doing this for a couple of years that what you're doing in Virginia with your group costs money. Uh, could you please tell everybody how they can join, donate, support? Uh, the floor is yours. Tell them how to get a hold of you, where to find you, etc. Okay, sure. Uh, well, our website is vcdl.org. That's in Virginia Citizens Defense League.org as an organization. vcdl.org. You can join there. You can contribute money if you wish. Membership is big. The more and more people we've got as members, the better off we are. Um, so joining is easy. It's $25 a year. Um, also, you can get on our free VA alert. It's an email blast that now goes out to almost 36,000 people, up from 29 six weeks ago. Um, and uh, you can learn all about what's going on in Virginia, the gun laws here. You'll, you'll see us organizing for these rallies and for Lobby Day. Um, you can, uh, we've got information about buses and so forth that we're putting together, parking. All that's on our main web page. And you can see about the, the, all the sanctuary cities, uh, all that, the big map we've got there, and vote photos of the overwhelming number of people at these things. It's ab absolutely incredible. What's going to save this country is grassroots, in my opinion. What's happened here is what's, what's going to do it. And how do you wake up your fellow gun owners? That, uh, that I don't know. And in Virginia, sadly, I mean, we screamed about this before the election. We were saying, people, it's going to be different this year. We need you to vote. We need you to get a hold of your friends, family, make them swear on their firstborn that they're going to show up. Uh, call them. We, we put out a message before election, during election, but it took an actual threat with, with some teeth that could be coming our way to do it. Don't let that happen to you. Use us as an example of how this of, of how this can sneak up on you. Get out there and um, those organizations like ours. The other thing I would say is do what we're doing as far as get yourself a huge email list. You know, get on a list server and have an email list that's massive. So when this happens, you can reach out to a load of people who can reach out to another load of people and can coordinate something like we did with the uh, with the sanctuaries, trying to get this grassroots effort uh, herded as best you can and, and get it to accomplish something. So that would be my, my best advice on that.